Hello everyone, Paul ASM. Welcome to part 10 of the Tamiya 112RC 211V Honda bike build. Before we get going today, make sure you sub to the channel, click the little bell notification symbol, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I do reply to them all. As always, all the products you see me use today, the glues, paint, etc, etc, all linked in the description down below. Go to the description of the video, it's right at the top, click on the link, it'll take you to the forum, and it's a 90 plus long list of all items uh, that I use in my videos. So, part 10. Today we are going to concentrate on the front end of the bike. We're going to get the wheels built up, the hubs, brake discs, calipers. <clears throat> we're going to use our aftermarket fork set to get that all built up. Uh, we've got some caliper spaces to pop in as well, which caused a little bit of confusion the other day on Facebook when I did a guess what these are on the little plugs I removed. Um, so, yeah, we've got a bit to do. Not too difficult. Um, and then we're going to test fit it all on the bike. Test fit off from Fender and see how it all looks it's going to come back off we've got some other detail to add to it as well um so yeah we're going to add that as and when we go through but today that is the main goal get all the front end built up and uh, go from there so there we are so as always thanks for all the support we're getting up everyone in the comments brilliant thanks to everyone that's left a comment um support's fantastic glad you're on doing the join the build i am too i literally can't put this thing down i've got other projects on the go i've got a main tune ship that I've started, I've got an Escort Cosworth I've started, a Subaru, and I don't want to work on them, I just want to work on this. So this is going to be done pretty soon, I think. Literally releasing the videos when they're done. Um, so that's it. So we're getting through it pretty quick. So, let's crack on, and let's get started today. Right, so let's have a look at the instructions of what we've got to do today. So we've got our aftermarket Tamiya fork set, so we're going to leave some of the kit components B, and for the most part, use the Tamiya aftermarket fork set for this. We've got our front calipers to build up. Uh, front fender will be test fit along with the wheels, hubs, and discs. And then the calipers will be attached with our aftermarket caliper spacers. These are the Tamiya aftermarket forks. Uh, so we get the metallic anodized fork set with the newer uh, replacement front sections, trees, and top mount um, fixings as well. So use your instructions to figure out what you will be using and what you won't. We'll also be using the kit calipers, which are very nice. And our brake line connector too. So a mixture of kit and aftermarket parts for this. Now, silly me, I forgot to uh, rec hit record when I was cutting off the kit parts we need on the aftermarket set. So I'm using the actual kit part um, to show what I did. So I've got my JLC razor saw with the finer tooth blade and we're just lining up where those spaces connect onto the body of the fork bottom and then we're going to lightly use the razor saw to cut them off and then this will be replaced with the top studio um aftermarket spaces so it's a case of cutting these off drilling the little hole popping the metal part in between the caliper and that's it pretty sturdy forward just make sure you take your time cutting these off. You want a nice accurate cut. So you're left with a little tiny part that looks just like this. As you can see, very, very small. But it'll make a massive difference because it saves us painting them later on. They've got the correct detail in them. Um, and they just look better all around, to be honest. They're a worthy addition. They only cost a few pounds. They're not expensive. Just a bit of a fiddly thing to do. Good razor saw like this. The JLC one is fantastic. And you'll make short work of it in no time. Or as you see, the other one just pinged off. But there we go. There's both of them cut off with ease. No drama at all. And it's a case of giving it a light sand. Don't go too mad with the sander. You don't want to be altering the profiles of everything. So we're just going to flatten off the edge with a 400 grit ultimate thinny stick. And then we're going to just round the end where we might have flattened it a touch with a 240 sponge. You see, we're not going mad, there's no pressure being used. I'm literally letting the sander run over it, and then we can buff it up before paint. And there we go. So that's it. So this is the part I forgot to hit record on the aftermarket part. Uh, this is the aftermarket part after it's been cut off. So as you can see, exactly the same, it's just a different part. So now we need to uh, drill the holes. Now these are the parts I removed from these, exactly the same as the white parts. As you can see, these are the replacement spaces. They're a lot better looking. We don't need painting. And they're going to look much, much better on the model. So we need to drill a couple of locating points for these on each one. Now, very handily, 
um, where the extruded part's been on the plastic part leaves a little little white dot on the plastic behind which is a good indicator of where you need to drill so i've got my shanked drill bits i highly recommend these they're a lot stronger than your standard drill bit they take a bit more sideways pressure not a lot but they do and um, these are the drill bits i tend to use most of the time through my tamiya pin vise there's links for these in the description down below if you go and have a little look these are nice sharp blades, uh, drill bits, sorry. Like I say, if you look in the center, you can see a little white imprint. That's a perfect reference point to start with. So we're starting off with, I think it's about a 0.7 mil drill bit here. I think we'll essentially need, I think it's a 1.2. We're gonna use this to make sure we're centered. We're not going right through, we're just putting a little mark in to make sure we're all good. Flip it around, we'll do the other side again, the little white points there. It's a perfect reference point. Might not be for you, but it was for me. It was very, very handy. Again, no pressure. We're not going right through. We're just putting that reference point there to make sure we look centered. I'm just going to apply a little bit of sideways pressure to bring it over a touch. There we go. Now we're going to grab our spacer and just offer it up to the hole. Not trying to make it fit. We're just making sure it is centralized in the part where we need it. And it looks perfect to me so we've got a, i think it's a 1.2 mil i used on this we're going to widen the hole so we don't need to go deep the part doesn't need any real depth these things are really fiddly so i would drill test fit if you need to give it a little push in that's a bonus because it'll hold itself in there once you're happy that it's centralized and it's gone in full full depth you can then commit to gluing it in place once you've got the both on. These aren't glued, these are just loose for now. We're just going to test fit the caliper. Make sure it all lines up, all looks fine, which it does. As you can see, no problems there at all. So we're in the spray booth now. Everything's been primed in UMP black primer and left to dry. Uh, we've got LP54 dark iron, which we're going to use on the lower fork part. So we've just uh, cut the spaces off. We've got LP11, which we're going to use on the brake hose connector. We've got LP63 titanium silver for the center fork holder part. I'm not sure what they're called. I know the top's called the tree. And we've got TS21 gold for the calipers. Now, we will change that color later on because my reference shows it to be a bit lighter on the front than the back. So we've got the LP64 dark iron thin 50-50 with the Tamiya thinner with retarder. I'm just going to give this a couple of coats, two or three, and it gives us that nice dark iron finish that my reference shows. So we're going through the 0.2 mil fine needle conversion set on the Apex. We're about 15 PSI as usual. Just giving it a light coat to begin with, building it up, probably gets about two, three coats at the most, building it up slowly. Put it down for five minutes between the coats. And this is our last coat going on. As you see, we've got nice coverage. Beautiful color. Really does depict the dark iron color really, really well. Once we're happy with those, they can be put to one side. Now we've got some gold. Titanium gold. We're going to mix this with a little bit of the dark iron to make the color for our tree on top. I think it's called the tree. I'm pretty sure it is. The handlebar tree. My references show to be a pretty dark, goldy iron colour. It's a bit of a strange colour on top. Um, I did spray it in the gold at first. Wasn't happy with the uh, the colour, so we came back and darkened it up at such more. Titanium silver now on these. Again, a couple of light coats. Put them down for a bit. Let them uh, dry. Come back. Everything's going to get about two to three coats. All through the same airbrush. All the same pressure. So 0.2 and 15 psi. After a couple of coats, nice even coverage all around. Beautiful color of this titanium silver from Tamiya in the LP colors. And they can all be left to dry. Now, the calipers. So I've picked TS21, which is what we did the rear caliper in. Um, sprayed it up, thought it looks good, but it's a little bit too dark. My references show the front calipers to be lighter than the rear. So later on, I think we came back with TS48, I think it was. Uh, and as you can see, it's a much lighter gold color and much more suited um, for the look we were after. So very happy to change that. So just make a note of that. References are the key. 
Uh, if you look at the references in the book, it shows it as being a lighter gold color, which you might see in a second when we zoom in. So these are our lower fork sections done in the dark iron. Lovely, lovely color. As you can see, we're going to zoom in a second, have a little look. And pay attention to that caliper color. And as you can see, it's not as gold as I had it. So happy that I changed the color. It's not an exact match, but it's as close as I'm going to get. And I'm happy with the color. It looks good on a model. I've used it before. Um, we now need to mask this off, the silver and the nut as well. So a little bit of fiddly masking. It's where the Azu take comes into its own again. It's a little bit tedious as always, but time spent well worth it because we get a nice airbrush finish. You could, of course, brush paint it, but you'll never get the same finish as you do through an airbrush. So some careful masking with the uh, one mil Azu tape. Get the top and the bottom done, and then we just need to fill it in with normal Tamiya tape. So just use the reference point. You've got a nice uh, line to follow all the way around, and then we can spray it up in LP11. So there we go, there's the top part done. Just getting the bottom part finished off. Then we can ill fill the rest with Tamiya tape on both of them. Get them sprayed up. And they're then ready for some detail painting and some weathering. So there we go, there's both parts masked up with the Azu. As you can see, we've got the LP11. Gonna give a couple of coats to this. So we can spray the upper part because that's hidden inside the actual fork dampers part itself. Just make sure everywhere else is fully covered with tape. It is quite fiddly, but again, as I always say, the time spent here is well worth it. A couple of coats later, we've got nice even coverage. The LP11, thin 50-50, 0.2 mil needle airbrush, uh, and 15 PSI. Now we've got LP39 racing white. So this is like an ivory off-white. And we're going to spray up our reservoirs in front of the tree. So we've masked it all up. We're going to spray the white. A couple of coats of that. Let that dry. Once it's dry, we'll come back and paint the tops in semi-gloss black. So a bit of unmasking now. We're going to unmask this lower part. Again, take your time. Remember, you've got fresh paint. You've not let it dry like I didn't. This is literally straight away. Make sure you don't touch any areas. Um, that are still wet and as we can see perfect not a problem at all nice mask and we've got no overspray no real bleed through absolutely perfect so we're going to get some lp11 and we're going to detail paint um some of these raised sections here that represent um nut detail fitment detail uh, we've got a tamiya fine brush we're just shaking the paint as we did in the spray booth uh, a little bit of paint stays in the lid. We've got our Optivisor thingy. <laughs> and uh, we're going to paint this up. I move my head in a minute. Don't worry, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. There we go. Very fiddly part, so just take your time. Be careful detail paint. If you do go over a touch, it's not a problem. You can put a wash in there, uh, a wash or hide, a multitude of sins. Just be careful of those parts you've just painted. Even though it is dry, if you put a lot of pressure on it, you will leave a fingerprint in there. And again, same for the other side. Just make sure you're getting everything where it needs to be painted. So this is the, the false side as such. This is the side where nothing's going through. On the other side would be a screw out of the kit. But for us, uh, we've got the Top Studio uh, bolts. So you can see the calipers all painted up in that uh, TS-48. Very happy I chose that color over the other gold. It's a little less in your face. We're going to detail paint and the hose connector. The LP paints brush really well. Not in larger areas, but brush painting little detail parts. They do brush paint really nicely. It's a case of loading your brush up a little bit more than you need to and just, yeah, rather than brush it, dab it on. Picking out some of the detail on the caliper now. Just to add a little bit of visual interest. The few points you can add it to. And then we're going to infill the Brembro letter in, the same we did with the rear, with um, H3, which is uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous Red. So we're not completely covering it in it, we're just trying to be as accurate as we can in the lettering. 
Because the more accurate you are, the less there is needed to remove later on. So, careful application. And again, once dry, we can come with some thinner and a cotton bud and remove the excess and have a nice looking caliper. Once we hit it with a wash, it will look really, really nice as a kit part. You can buy resin aftermarket parts and white metal. To be honest, I don't think they need it. The kit parts are very good. They show a lot of detail. So we've got a little bit of Ultima thinner on a cotton bud. We've not doused the cotton bud in it. We just put a dab on there. I'm just going to lightly rub over. You see, I'm applying no real pressure to the part. I'm just literally lightly rubbing it over. Once you're happy you've got the majority off, turn it around to the dry side. And just lightly rub it away. And as you can see, it's quick and easy with that. All the excess paint's gone. We're left with a nice Brembro logo and none of the gold has been removed. So we're going to add a wash to some of these parts now. And as you see, because I'm zoomed in so far, my camera's decided to focus on my hand rather than the part. So squint your eyes and imagine you can see the wash being applied perfectly to that part and we'll all be good. As you can see, we do get focused as the pan goes out of shot. Um, it's just one of those things. A couple of parts to uh, detail up on this as well. And then the calipers themselves. Now the key to using this wash, don't load it up. Get as much off the brush as you can on the side of the bottle. I like to also thin it a touch as well. Again, squint your eyes, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and just touch it like a capillary reaction. Same as when you're using Tamiya Extra Thin, let the capillary reaction carry it around. So there we go, they've all been given the wash. They can sit and dry for a few hours. Once dried, we've wiped up all the excess. Uh, same way we did the other wash the other day. Sansador from Windsor Newton, odorless mineral spirits on a cotton bud. Wipe off the excess wash, and as you can see, We've got a great looking caliper. Be careful on the calipers. Don't get the wash in the Brembo or you'll ruin your hard work from earlier. And again, these parts, nicely washed. Just a little bit to remove. You'll spot bits here and there. And uh, again, same principle as getting the paint off. Don't load the uh, cotton bud up with the odorless mineral spirits. Just put a dab on there. It's all you need to get it off. It's as easy as that. So now we're going to pop our caliper spaces in. You can see I've got four of them on the bench there. We've got some of the Loctite uh, Precision Pen. Glue decanted on a UMP paint pot. And we're going to pop these in place. Make sure they're home. So we want to make sure they're in the right place, on the right angle, and that they're pushed fully in. We've already test fitted them, so we know they fit perfectly. And there we go. So once you're happy with it, make sure everything's orientated right. Grab one of the calipers, just do a test fit to begin with again. Once you're happy with it, add some glue and stick the caliper in place. And there we go. So assemble the forks, use your instructions, but this little sleeve goes on first. Then the main part of the part of the fork goes on. It goes in one direction with the locating hole inwards. So you pop it in, line up a little hole, and then you have a little locating pin which test fit first, I have test fitted it. Once you're happy that it fits, put a little dab of sea glue right inside it, pop the little pin in, push it home, and that's it. Let the glue dry, job done. Do both of those, and you're all good. So we're gonna attach the center part of the discs. So a couple of dabs of sea glue. Make sure you've got the right way around. It's very easy to do this the wrong way. How do I know? Because I've done it. So double check your references, your instructions. Pop one side in. Don't get any glue on your fingers. And there we go. When you're happy, that's it. So we need to detail paint a couple of those parts later on, which I'll show. And we need to give it a wash, which we're going to do in the next part off camera. So we've got our wheels, they were 2 k uh, a while back. And we've got our tyres, which have been de-seamed exactly like we did last time. A couple of dabs of CA glue, we're going to pop our hubs in. So again, make sure the locating tab is located correctly. There is a locating point on each side. Once you're happy with it, there's another couple of locating points this side that the disc attached to. And again, a couple of dabs strategically placed. You don't want a massive amount of it. 
and then make sure your locating points are lined up correctly. Have a little look. Once you're happy, make sure it's located in the locating points and you're happy where it is. Now, the clamps for the center. Again, these are orientated one way, so refer to your instructions. Make sure you get them the right way. There's a little locating point on the inside and the inside of the fork itself as well. So dab a CA glue on each one. You can just see it there now. You can see the locating point. I'm just about to put the glue on it. There it is. And again, a couple of dabs. The sticker CA glue is uh, really good. Helps to hold the part as well. We're getting a big fan of these sticker CA glues. Never liked them at one point, um, but just liking the holding factor of them. And you get a little bit longer to work with them as well which on this is perfect because we've got to get the wheel in this in a minute and we will need to twist the fork a touch to get it in. So I know even though this is clamped together and held, we had a couple of dabs inside as well, I will be able to still maneuver it a little bit rather than being completely set in stone as such. Now this part, make sure this is orientated the right way with the holes upward at the uppermost point like that because that's where our brake line uh, connector goes to. And again, make sure you've got no glue in your fingers when you're doing this. You don't want to squeeze glue out everywhere make a terrible mess. If you do get a little bit of excess like I did there, use your cotter stick to wipe it off. And then a cotton bud to clean it off. Job done. Right, so we've got our bolt as last time. We're going to widen this hole a touch with a 0.15, no, it's a 1.5 mil drill bit. We're not going to bother with their spanner. We're going straight in with the Gerber pliers. It needs a little bit of forward um tension to get this to go in properly so i think this is easier and it makes less mess as long as you're positive with it you've got hold of the par properly and not too much of a ogre putting it on it'll work perfectly so now we can put our calipers on now the discs are in place a couple of dabs of ca glue and then popping the caliper in place make sure it's lined up correctly it's straight, it's in the disc correctly, and don't they look good? They look awesome. Very happy with that. A little bit of detail to add to the center um, bolt detail on the calipers, uh, the disc, sorry. Using our Molotow pen, and we're going to decant some in a paint pot and use a cocktail stick to add it to the inner parts that you can just see showing through. There you go. We'll let these dry. Molotow pens, they take forever if they ever do dry. Um, so we'll come back to a later date and add a wash to these. We also added a wash to the um, bolt holding the wheel on as well. And we'll have a look at those later on. So with our LP39 off white, racing white dried, now we can mask this off. Again, a little bit of AZU tape, a bit of careful masking. And we can paint the tops of these in LP5 semi-gloss black. Just some careful masking. Using the tweezers is a handy tool. Make sure you don't scratch your paint underneath, obviously. But the tweezers are a handy tool to make sure everything is put in place. And once both of these are done, off to the spray booth. A quick couple of coats of LP5. Semi-gloss black. And we're good to go. There we go, the final little bit of masking off there. That's the top of our tree painted up. We've still got a couple of parts to put on there. I think there's a couple of decals as well. But as you see, we'll push the fork underneath the bike just to get it test fitted. We've got our front fender on as well. These are only temporarily fitted. We will cover these being fitted when we get the forks in place later on. But for today, that's where we're at. So quick look at some pictures. As you can see, it's looking brilliant. Very happy with our front caliper color. Um, it's looking really well. All the colours I've chose, I'm really happy with. Um, need a little bit of weathering um, on those fluid reservoirs. And doesn't that front cowling, uh, front fender look absolutely fantastic? So that's us until next time. So there we go, that's where we're at. Um, it's looking good. Obviously it looks a bit weird in the match fair and what have you. We have got to take the forks back off. They're only loosely placed on at the minute with the tree on top. Um, We've got all the handlebars to do. Yeah, we've still got a MotoGP sensor to put on the front. We've got brake lines. Um, we've got a wash to put on the uh, the discs as well. They need a little bit of a wash still on the front. So it's not quite done yet. Um, but for the most part, 
it's on all it's on two wheels it's on a stand which is temporarily built as well and uh, we're really moving on so there we go as always got any comments or questions whatever pop them in the comments down below i do answer them all and uh, thanks to everyone that's been watching if you're not sub sub thumbs up hit the little bell notification and as always check out upretail.com you can get a lot of the products you see me using today inside the sky the facebook page and forum live at the bench page for our live show every friday and the off-air hangout group as well for our off-air hangouts where you can come and join us come and have a laugh bit of fun and of course check out my paul ism facebook page where all my personal modern work is shared as well as ism i share it there separately and come on over and that's it so i'll see you on part 11 when we'll be doing the exhausts which i'm not looking forward to at all i hate the exhaust on these bikes but we'll get that done and there we go thanks for watching today i'll catch you all next time take care Bye bye